um, or this quote unquote ministry is called sowing seeds of righteousness because despite whatever we think or you know um, what we might have been taught your garment whatever you wear you're sending a message um, and you're actually sowing seeds and the, we can either determine to sow good seeds as the bible says or we can sow bad seeds um, and you know good seeds by saying you know somebody can look at this person and go wow they and they will tell you if you act and they're, and they're honest they'll tell you you look like a christian you look like you're going to a club you look like you're going to a bar whatever your your garments are um an expression of your character and you know usually people will kind of play it off and say oh it really doesn't matter but actually it really does um and so we want especially if people know that we're christians or we say that we're christians we want people to know that um they want you want them to be able to to link your christianity with what you're wearing because um the world has its garment and christ has his garment and so we want to be sowing seeds of righteousness so what's the reason behind sowing seeds i created this ministry because i you know i want women to be able to to sew and make their own garments to reflect um, the likeness of Christ in everything that you do and say, and I know that it's not easy to do so when you don't necessarily want, some of us don't have the funds Two, we don't have, um, the resources, you know, like we don't know how to acquire where to go and look for modest clothing. Um, and also it's just expensive, right? But I want to, you know, as I had said before, look at Matthew 13 verses 24, um, which is actually the tagline for this ministry um and you're probably like oh you know it's it's a um it's a sewing class but we're talking about bible yes um it's it's the foundation of this ministry is christ um and so oftentimes we will refer back to the word of god and so this ministry was started because of matthew 13 24 um matthew 13 24 says and the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed a good seed in his field and you know, as I said before, we are sowing seeds by what people see. We're either saying, we're either sowing seeds of good seeds or bad seeds because a person will look at you and say, oh, you know, you look like a Christian or you don't look like a Christian or you're carrying yourself like a Christian, but we don't want people to be turned off by, um, by how we carry ourselves, you know, not just think about what we say, but what, how we carry ourselves. So the reason behind sowing seeds is sowing seeds of righteousness and modesty. All right, so having the right mindset, because before, um, before we can start really sewing and making garments and making gar you know, beautiful garments, you know, we need to have the right mindset. Um, 1 Corinthians 10 verses 31 says, that whatever we do, we should give glory to God um, in everything that we do. And so I don't want to teach you how to sew and then you're, walking down the street in a skirt up to your armpits and the cleavage down to your belly button because that would not be the right <laughs> kind of um seeds i want us to be sowing you know i want us to understand the the biblical context of modesty and how god wants us to give glory to him and so the questions that I, I want you to pose to yourself and that we'll ask and you know and talk through is why do i want to learn how to sew do i just want to make nice garments so that i can look good and be flashy and show off on people and go to church and have everybody compliment me and how well i look um because as i said before the lord was the one who kind of gave me the talent to sew um and in order for me to be able to sew he gave me the talent knowing that i would give glory to him because i've had opportunity where people would give me money to say oh, okay can you make me this dress can you make me this outfit oh, I'm going to Dream Weekend, which is like this party in Jamaica, or I'm, I'm going to this wedding and I want to look sexy. And I'm like, okay, so unless your, your cleavage is covered and this curse down to here, you know, or it's not sexy and tight, form-fitting and stuff like that, I can't do that. And they would wonder why, you know, but I'm paying you. But I'm like, yeah, but my talent is from God, so I have to give glory to him first. So why, are you, why, why do you want to learn how to sew? Who am I looking to please? Um, you know, I know some of you are married and sometimes the husbands, the men in the homes don't understand, they don't necessarily understand why, why we ought to dress the way we should. Um, you know, especially cause you know, outside of the Christian what men 
you know, we all have pride, but men, they love when their women look good. You know, they love when their woman, you know, the guys are like, yo, that's your girl. Whoa, she bad. Oh, she look good. Yada, yada, yada. And it makes them feel good. That's why a lot of times men who want to go for the quote unquote trophy girl. Um, so if you're looking to please your husband, your earthly husband and not your heavenly father or your, the, the heavenly husband that you've actually been married to first, which is Christ, then you also have the wrong mindset because you're going to be in a situation where God is telling you to dress more modest and to be more conservative and how you show off your body to, you know, the world. But your husband could be like, no, but I need you to look sexy. I don't want you to look like frumpy dumpy. I don't want you to look like no nun or whatnot. And you're going to have to choose. Right. Um, and the Bible says we ought to please God rather than men. So who are you trying to please? Then again, what message am I trying to send? What message are you trying to send? Are you just trying to draw attention to yourself so that you look sexy, so that you look better than the next sister next to you? Um, and says, when am I sowing seeds? So without really knowing that we're, we're sending a message, when you proclaim to be a Christian, you're sending messages every single time you walk out of your house and people are watching you. Um, because as I said before, before they will hear what you say, they will see what you wear. They will see how you carry yourself. And I remember, um, I think it's somewhere in Deuteronomy where the Lord was trying to impress upon Israel to carry themselves a certain way. Um, and he had asked them to make fringes on their garments and to dress a certain way. And he said that the nation will see you and say that this is a knowledgeable people. So before they would hear about Israel's God, before they would hear about all the wonderful things that he had done for them, the people would look at them and go, wow, who are these people and why do they carry themselves the way they do? Um, you know, and, and one of the things that I do notice that you can tell a lot of religion based on how they dress, but when it comes to the Christian, it's so hard to pick us out of a crowd these days. And so I kind of want to change that. I want people to look at you and say, wow, you're beautiful. And I believe you believe in God simply by the way you carry yourself. Um, and of course, whose am I? Before, you know, as Christians are you, you know, you've given your life over to God, you know that God is, you belong to God because he bought you back with a price. So you are God before you are God before you are anybody else. So you should always remember that he's first, his opinion is the only one that matters because when I had started to transition from um, more immodest clothing to modest clothing, people were trying to discourage me. And they were trying to tell me, oh, you don't have to wear that. You could just wear this. Oh, God doesn't, it doesn't matter what God thinks. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't care, et cetera, which is not true. And I remember the Lord pulling me aside and he brought me to his word and say, continue thou in the things that I have taught you, knowing of whom you have learned them. So um, as we continue, I just want to remind you that this is just setting the foundation for the classes so that we can have the blessing of God and that he, um, you know, he will give you the talent because it, the same thing that he has done to me, he can do for you. So, yes. So, all right, so you're clueless, but you want to learn how to sew. Um, and which is a great thing, a great place to be because you're actually here. Um, and it's, it sounds scary, it sounds difficult, it looks like it's hard, but it's really not. But how I started was I started small. Like I said, I started doing the little doll clothing. Um, you know, I start by just simple, simple mending or whatnot and just practice. Um, while the talent might have been there for a while that I really haven't developed, I just, I start small. And, you know, the Lord kind of pushed me and encouraged me. So, hey, why don't you just invest in a sewing machine? I'm like, no, nah, it's too much money. And he's like, but you spend more money on other things that, you know, are meaningless. Just bite the bullet and pay for the, the sewing machine, which I did. And so kind of why I'm here. So I want to encourage you, start small. Um, and it's okay to make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes and I still make mistakes. And, you know, it's okay. You know, some of those mistakes you can undo, some of those mistakes you can't undo. But later on, I'm going to show you or explain to you how you can make those mistakes and, um, and, not, and, not, and it not costing you. Um, be patient with yourself. It's not going to be, you know, easy right out the gate. 
but prayerfully, you know, be determined and the Lord will lead you. Again, I say practice. And one of my biggest um, tools or support is YouTube. I love going on YouTube, um, learning things, um, looking at videos and to see, you know, how somebody does this or how they did that. What do I need to do? Um, YouTube is going to be one of your best friends. If you have somebody that is close to you that learns how, that knows how to sew, um, you can go ahead and reach out to that person and they can give you one-on-one -on -one because my intention for this class was that we would be in person, um, that everyone would have their machine and that I'd go around and help everyone, you know, start up and learn. But unfortunately, we don't have that opportunity right now. Um, we can only just help you to start up where you are and then we can go on from there. But again, I want you to pray and ask God to give you wisdom because it's nothing too hard for God. And if he can help me to get to where I am now, he can more than 100% get you um, to where you need to, to be in order for you to be able to make beautiful garments for him. All right. So you want to, you know, to start, you want to, you know, change your, your, your garments. You want to learn how to sew, but you don't have no money. You come to the right place because I don't like spending money unnecessarily. Right? So thrift stores, if you're bougie and you don't like wearing secondhand clothes, I can't help you. Okay. If you're extra bougie and you don't like, you know, buying fabrics from like warehouses or, you know, like cheaper fabrics, I can't help you, right? But if you want to save a coin, you're in the right place. And when I tell you thrift stores are a gold mine when it comes to refurbishing your, 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 um, your closet and just finding things that you can alter, finding things that might be a little bit too big, too, too, you know, too loose, too, too whatever. They're like the, a, a gold mine for like stuff that you can alter, stuff that you can change or stuff that doesn't need altering at all. One of the things that really helped me was when I first um, started going into thrift stores and I'm like, God, I don't have no money. I'm in school. I only got like 20 bucks. And I would go in there and I would come out with the tags still on them from Calvin Klein. I have so many cashmere sweaters and you know, cashmere sweaters are very expensive. Cashmere's, wools, um, denim, all in my size, $2, $3, $5. You know, my friend saw me in this really nice room and she was like, Ooh, where'd you get that rub? $2 at the thrift store. So I'm telling you, find you a secondhand store. And the best thing is in those places that you'll find, you'll find, um, stuff for like $5, $2, a dollar that you can easily cut up and practice on, make mistakes as much as you want. And, you know, let that be your, your stomping ground to find things that can help you. And I'm, I guarantee if I could take all of you with me and show you some of the things that I have transformed from $2 to looking like 150, you would not believe that I got it in a thrift store. Um, and even in fact, like one of the dresses that I had um, from last year, everybody's like, oh my gosh, it's so nice. I was like, <laughs> I paid $2 for it at the thrift store, but I didn't know. So I'm just saying, go knock the thrift stores um, the, and your closet. So a lot of things in your closet, you might think that, okay, it's too tight, too small, too whatever. You can still find ways to alter it. So go into your closet. It's okay to make mistakes. Try, um, you know, looking for ideas, because I can give you some too, which is probably going to be later on, how you can change some of the stuff that you have to make it more modest, to make it um, more comforting, or just to change up your closet. You don't have to always go buying clothes. You can just mismatch, or you can, you know, take a scissors and cut this off, and then add this to that, and you'll find new garments in your closet without having to spend money. And some of us have way too much clothes anyways, so we got more than enough opportunity to go through and revamp and recut and retry and do all of that. All right, so your closet is one place that you can start. Um, you have a grandmother, an auntie, a sister that has too much clothes to go over there. You know, let them, let them know you on a mission and you want to see what you can do and how maybe you can practice. And, you know, sometimes they have stuff that they are not wearing that they're like, you know what? Yeah, you can have this a little bit too big, it's too small, but, you know, see what you can do with it. The clearance rack in the stores. Right? Anything you go into a store, always head to the clearance rack, right? The clearance rack, you'll find lots of half price items that, um, you know, somebody returned because it's missing a button, the zipper is ripped because they tried it on and, and it ripped going up. So you can find those things. You can 
um, you know, get it for little to nothing. You can repair the zipper, repair the button. Sometimes I find stuff that's too big and I'm like, oh, I could trim this down and I can make it into something really nice. And there you go, you find another outfit off the clearance rack, but because we're learning to sew, we can see the vision. So you have to kind of start seeing the end product to what you're trying to do. Um, so old bed sheets, the last video that I posted that I shared, um, I made a dress and a skirt out of curtains. And if you haven't seen it, it's on the YouTube page and the Instagram page. You can literally make garments out of anything. And in fact, I have some curtains to my left that we had gotten a um, couple months ago that were too short. And I replaced them with longer ones. And I'm going to make a dress out of it for my sister with um, those curtains. So anything that's fabric, look at it as you can make it into something. So sometimes we have extra, extra bed sheets that are beautiful pattern, beautiful colors. It's cotton. Um, it's, it's linen or rayon or whatever fabric, you can still use those. And of course, I said curtains. So anything that's fabric can be made into clothing. All right, everybody good so far? Any questions? I can't see if anybody's hands are up. No, okay. Let me see, are we good? Okay. And feel free to unmute yourself. You can you can ask questions. You can, you know, you can chime in. You can comment. Um, you know, it's it's a relaxed environment. Um, all right. So, getting your startup because this is a startup class. Um, there are some things that you're going to need. You know, for the upcoming class. Um, and I put needle, thimble. If you don't know what a thimble is, it's this metal thing here that you put over your finger so that the needle doesn't jab you. Um, but if you're like me, you just get jabbed anyways, or you just develop really thick skin. <laughs> but if you're very sensitive to like needle pricks and stuff, get a thimble. Um, threads um, on the spool. Um, and there are different kinds of threads for different kinds of fabrics, different kinds of projects that you're trying to do. So you have silk, cotton, polyester, metal metallic, and clear threads for like embroidery and stuff so that you, you don't see it. You have different lengths of, of thread. Um, you have, you know, from I think like 200 to 1,000 yard. And that all determines on, um, I guess, the size of your projects and also the size of your machine. If you can see in the back here, I have a serger and they require like the 1,000 yard thread, the really big ones that go on the back. Um, because these kind of machines, you really don't want to be changing um, the thread all the time because it's kind of hard to do and really complicated. Um, but I'll teach you how to do that too. So scissors um, for, for cutting. Please do not go into the kitchen and use the kitchen scissors or the hair scissors on your fabrics. Don't do it, okay? Buy a pair of scissors specifically for fabric. And you should have a pair of scissors specifically for hair and for one in the kitchen also. Um, tape measure because you're gonna need to start measuring yourself, measuring um, how much you're going to cut, how much you need to add, how much you need to take off, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so tape measure, pins, I hope you're writing all this down, or if not, you can go back and watch it. Pins um, for pinning your fabrics into place. You, you can find different sizes of pins, um, and you have the ones that are studded, kind of like these that you can, you can buy, or you have the little small ones, which I do prefer to use these because if I forget this in my garment when I'm sewing, it won't break my machine needle. It's more than likely to just slide right off while these bigger ones, if your machine needle goes out on this, it's going to break. And I've broken a lot of needles like that. So I do prefer the smaller ones, um, but you can buy either one that you're comfortable with, the studded ones or the regular simple pins. And this little fellow in the corner right here is my pin cushion. This is, what I call you? This is my pin cushion, y'all. Um, it's just a sock cut in two with some rice in it <laughs> and you know, a little scarf or whatnot. But you don't have to be super fancy. You could just take a pair of old socks. You could just stuff it with a bag of rice, um, with some rice or some sand or whatever you've got and make yourself a pin cushion. You know, we're, like I said, we're doing this on a budget. I know y'all got bills and things to do. So we don't need to be spending unnecessarily here. So. Oh, we got eyes too. Yeah. So pin cushion. Um, so you need pins, 
chalk because when you're measuring, you want to want to measure, um, you know, make make markers so that you know where to cut. Um, you need a sewing kit to organize all the equipment and stuff that you have because you don't want, you know, to be missing stuff, especially when you have kids running around the house and pins all over the place. You don't want that because you don't, last thing you want to do is step on a pin, sit on a pin, or you can't find yourself when you need to or have, the, you know, the kids hurt themselves um, with the scissors and pinchers and all that stuff. So get a sewing kit for your organization of your, of your sewing um, things. Sewing machines, of course. Um, I'm gonna start with the needle and thread for the next class so that it'll give you time to try and acquire um, a sewing machine. I understand that they are not the most inexpensive items, but they are an investment. Um, and the best place for you to start, I'll tell you later on, where you can find really good affordable sewing machine. Um, but you need a sewing machine. Um, I put electric or treadle. I just recently got a treadle machine. If you don't know what a treadle machine is, it's the one your great great granny used to use, but the foot pedals that don't need electricity, you might want to think about investing in one of those for the near future. If you know what I mean, we won't always have electricity. Um, so if you have one, praise the Lord. If you don't have one, um, try and acquire one, get ask one, you know, from your granny or if she still has hers, you can use hers. Um, and a serger is kind of sort of optional um, because I can sh I'm going to show you ways and techniques that you can finish off your raw ends without needing to use an overlocking machine, which is this right here, um, which these are a little bit more um, cost, cost they don't, they're not more cost effective, but they take more money. Um, but they also are an investment. Um, I couldn't fit my dress form in the picture, but I have in the frame, but I have a picture of it coming up where um, a dress form is basically a mannequin of a body where you can learn to start sewing on because I used to sew on myself and I have to measure all the time and it's really hard to try and pinpoint where everything is on yourself and you're sticking yourself with pins and it's like, ah, you know. So I invested in a dress form and I would suggest that you try and do that too. Um, and my recommendation is for you to get a, an adjustable mannequin. You can find them on Amazon. I pay like 90 bucks for mine. Um, and what it does is it goes from different sizes. It goes from, you have some that goes from like a extra small to a medium and or from a medium to an extra large and you can adjust it based on your size. And if you wanna make something for your mom or your sister, you can adjust it to her size and her, um, her height, her weight and all that, which is excellent. So um, a dress form or a mannequin that is adjustable is my recommendation. Um, and I hope you're having, you know, you know, like you're, um, you know, having thoughts that you might want to ask questions later on, um, because we're going to have time for questions. So one thing I want you to do is when you're learning how to sew is understand, understanding fabrics and how different fabrics kind of give you different looks. Um, some fabrics are really heavy and they're really hard and they don't drape very well. Um, some fabrics just don't like being cut. Some fabrics don't like being, being sewn on. Um, if you're trying to make a garment that's light and flowy, some fabrics are an absolute no. If you're trying to make a, um, a, a more fitted, or not fitted, but like a, what's the word? If you're trying to make a garment that's more structured, um, certain fabrics are better for that. So one of the best ways to learn that is to take some time, go into a fabric store, um, and just touch them, feel them, um, let this fabric speak to you and tell you about itself and just really feel them. You'll start to feel the difference between them. Some of them are shiny, some of them are thick, some of them are thin, some of them are very light and flowy, some of them drape easy, some of them are like stiff, you know. Um, and depending on what garments you want to make, you wanna make sure you pick, and pick the right fabric and understand the fabrics that you're trying to use. So my recommendation for fabrics when you're buying or if you're shopping, um, and the, like I said, the best place to find these fabrics now is like the thrift store because for some reason, the older, the older fabrics or the older styles um, have the better fabric because now all these new garments are being made with all these plastic fibers, which are not healthy. So you want to go for cottons and all the plant-based um, fibers are in green. So cottons, linen, wool, silk, rayon, cashmere, bamboo, and lotus, which I really discovered, really just discovered lotus silk. Um, they're 100% natural, so make sure you check the tags on the clothes when you go into the thrift store or, um, or when you're buying so that you can know what fibers or what natural fibers you're using because they allow the body to breathe better. Um, and so we know cotton is made from plants, linen is also plants, wool is made from sheep, silk is from the silkworm, 
Um, rayon is, is manufactured from natural materials, but it's con still considered natural. Cashmere's are made from goats and bamboo from bamboos and lotus from the lotus plant. Um, polyester, nylon, viscose, acrylics, um, they're all man-made. Um, but like I said, you know, if you're just starting up and you just want to make some garments, it's okay to just get whatever you can, just practice on it. But keep an eye out for all these natural fabrics, these natural fibers, because they are healthier for you. Um, and just understanding just thickness, the depth of some of these fabrics and how they, they work when you're sewing. Um, so for my recommendation for beginning sewers, when you're going for, to shop for fabric and you're just starting to learn how to sew, you want to go for stretchy fabrics. Um, you have different kinds of stretchy fabric. You have um, one way stretch, which when you pull it, it only pulls this way, but when you pull it the other way, it's like, eh, there's, no, there's a lot of resistance, doesn't stretch. And then you have two way stretch where you might pull it in both directions and it stretches. And then you have four way stretch where it doesn't matter which direction you pull it, it's gonna stretch. Um, those kind of fabrics are far more forgiving. And those are the ones that I actually started out on when I started making garments for myself. Because if you make a mistake, if you cut it too small, it'll still fit. It just be a little bit more tight. Or if you cut it too big, it's still fine. But the last one, which is no stretch at all, those are the ones that have to be tailored. Those are the ones that you need more pattern and you more need more measurements. While if you cut it wrong, you cut it wrong, you just gonna have to start all over and get new fabric. So the no stretch fabrics are not very forgiving and you're just gonna have to just start from scratch. So go with the one way stretch, two way stretch or the four way stretch when you're first starting out how to sew. Um, as I said, because those fabrics are far more forgiving. All right, so understanding now fabric, right? The, you have the grain and the grain of the fabric, you have the weft and the warp. Um, and I have a diagram here that will help you to understand um, you know, what the grain is, what the selvage, the bias, the web, and all these things are, because when you are making skirts, you kind of want the, the grain to be running down. Um, and you, it's, it's really hard to spot, but once you, well, I don't have it on here, but if you pick up like a, a piece of cotton or a, um, like a solid print piece of fabric, you'll be able to see like these tiny lines running in a direction, that's the grain of the fabric. Um, and depending on how and what you're sewing, you might want the grain to be running down or just to make sure that the pattern is, is seamless. Like it's not, it doesn't look choppy. And it, I think the best way to explain it is like if you're using, um, uh, what you call it, plaid fabric or fabrics that have vertical and horizontal lines on them. And, you know, some, some designers kind of use it to do a style where the lines will be running in one direction and then they turn it and it's running in the other direction and it looks like a very nice design. Um, but that's like just the grain of the fabric kind of magnified so that you will see um, like a pattern or whatnot. But yeah, pay attention to that. And then the selvage is just a raw end of the fabric. And depending on what you're cutting and how you're, you know, what garments you're making, the selvage um, can make or break the garment. Because I remember the last dress that I made, I didn't, because like I said, guys, I'm self-taught. Um, I didn't realize that I was cutting in the wrong direction. And when I finished cutting, the selvage was on the wrong side. Um, so yeah, so that's just a bit of information on, you know, the fabric selvage and stuff like that. But for, you know, a fabric, there's a lot of different fabrics for different occasion. Um, and I want you to be familiar with some of the fabrics. Um, you have chiffons, cotton, crepes, denim, which we all know. We have lace that we use for like intimates and lingeries and gowns, leathers, linen, satins, velvet, um, damask, jersey, muslin, um, which is like a plain woven kind of fabric, organza, spandex, and the list goes on and on and on. So depending, as I said before, um, you know, what fabric, what, what you're trying to make, the fabric can make or break your outfit. Um, chiffons are light or lightweight, cottons are light and thin, and you know, the, dif the different um, explanation is there for like every single one of them. Do we have any questions so far or everybody's good? There's a question in the chat. Okay, hold on, let me, let me see, let me go back. Um, okay. So weft vertical and warp horizontal and bias is diagonal. Yes, yes. So 
the western because it's almost like you know have you ever seen somebody done like weaving on like a, a board and they'll tell you the the um the depending on the, the different how they how they they wire the the board they'll tell you that this one is the web this one is the wharf and then the bias is like a horizontal line that goes across um that when you're cutting so it's only like specifically needed when you're making like skirts or if you're trying to do like circle skirts or if you're trying to um honestly like cut certain patterns but they i just put it there to, to let you know that these are some of the things that in fabric so if i say okay fold it on the bias or cut it um you know in this direction that you kind of have an understanding what i'm talking about or you know what i'm trying to explain um so yes so somebody says um know what you mean or make one with duct tape okay yeah 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 is that in regards to the the mannequin i think that's what she is regarding right sister sodoya i'm not hearing i'm not sure if you're talking yes okay yes so yeah, there is um there's a video on YouTube where you can actually find how to make your own mannequin, how to make your own dress form, um, by using duct tape. Um, and it's a fun activity if you have kids that you can do it with the children. Um, and then you can get duct tape and you can put on something really form fitting and then you can just wrap it all around you and then cut it off and then stuff it and it's really cool. Um, and it's less expensive than actually going forward and buying a mannequin. Um, but if you have the funds and you don't mind spending and getting, you know, taking the time to buy one off of Amazon or off of let go or some other secondhand store. It's a good investment, especially if you have other people in your family that you want to um, make garments for the adjustable mannequin is really, really cool. Okay. So, all right. So when it comes to draping and cutting patterns, um, one of the easiest ways, as I was saying before, the picture here is a, is a picture of an adjustable mannequin. Um, and there are videos that you can look at on YouTube to see how to drape, but it's really easy. All you're doing is, is pinning the fabric onto the dress form um, and fitting it on the fabric to create your patterns. But one of the easiest ways that I learned how to cut my patterns is to use patterns from garments that you already have that already fit. And all you simply do is just take the old garment, you lay them down and you trace over them. Um, they already fit you. They already have, you know, your size. You just need to get your fabrics and whatnot. And, you know, kind of like what this girl is doing in the background where she just has her pattern and she puts it on to her fabric that she's cutting. The same thing you can do too with the, the, the garments and the dresses that you already have and or that already fit. You just lay them out. Um, you can do it on parchment. You can do it on old newspaper. And you can then create your patterns from that. And then you can store them for um, um, future use. So, um, so you can drape on the mannequin. You can drape on your own body, which is, as I said, it's kind of difficult. But if you have help, you can do that. Um, and also, um, it's hard when you have to pin on yourself or especially if you have to drape a fabric on your back, it's really hard. So you can drape on your own body, create your own patterns from garments and, or you can order and buy them online. Um, there are plenty of websites that you can find where you can buy patterns You can go to Walmart, even in Walmart in the textile section, they have a section that you can buy patterns. It's already put together for you. Just buy it, put it on your fabric, pin it, cut it, and the instructions are there to show you how to sew it together. Um, and one thing that I do, which I don't know how many people, that people can do that, is I eyeball and cut. And you're like, what do you mean you eyeball and cut? So I have this thing with just being able to look at the, the design in my head and know what patterns I need to cut. Um, and so I can just look at the fabric and say, okay, I want to make a, let's say a V-neck or I want to make a wrap dress. I could just look at the fabric and I could just eyeball and cut it. That I really can't teach you how to do. You just have to um, uh, figure it out, I guess, you know, eyeball. But there are plenty of other ways that you can, like I say, you know, draping the patterns, using old garments that you already have. 
and practice. You can definitely learn how to do the eyeball and cut thing, but you just need to practice. Um, and if you already have it, that's wonderful. All right, so here we now are gonna Question? start to try. Oh, somebody say something? Yes, I just wanted to know when you cut your clothing that you already have, when you want to trace the clothing that you already have, you wanna do it inside out, right? Um, so, so yes, yeah, so if you have, well, actually you can do both, but the best way to do it is turn the garment inside out um, because then you can see where the, the seam starts. Usually you need about, I would say a half an inch seam allowance. And the seam allowance is that extra bit of fabric that you sew on that when you sew on that, it won't take up the actual measurement of your, your fabric, of your design. Um, but if you already know that you can just, you know, trace your padding on the, on the right side and then just later on add the half an inch seam allowance, which I've done before. So you can do either way. So you just have to remember to, if you're tracing on the wrong side, that the seam allowance is already there because you're tracing in, um, with the stitch, the sides, the sides, the sides that has been already stitched. But if you're tracing on the right side, that's not there. And you're just going to have to go ahead and add the half an inch seam allowance. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So now you want to be able to start setting up your workstation so that we can actually start sewing. And I know, like I said before, sewing machines are very expensive um, or can be very expensive. But I have some list of places here that you can start by looking. Let go or offer up is um, going to be your best friend. And let go and offer up is now the same app, but offer up is basically like a online thrift store. But what it is, is people that might have something that they're no longer using and what they do is they post it. They're like, oh, you know, I have this couch. I don't really need it. I'm going to post it. You can come pick it up for $10. Um, that's where I found like my MacBook, my cell phone. Um, I don't remember if that's where I got this, the serger, but you just go on the app. It's called OfferUp and you look, you'll find sewing machines from 50, 40, 30, 100, um, you know, and anywhere in between from people who just don't need their machine anymore and just want to get rid of it. Um, Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace, of course, everybody uses Facebook or almost everybody I know that uses Facebook. Go on the Marketplace app. Just look for, just look for sewing machine. You can find, again, sewing machines right around the corner from your house. Somebody just has it, don't need it, will sell it to you for 30 bucks. Um, so you don't have to buy one brand new. You don't have to go to Walmart and spend $150 on a brand new sewing machine. If you want to, that is up to you. But again, I'm trying to help you save some money. Um, and as I said before, thrift stores. My sister Sherry was telling me from, um, she was telling me that she went to, uh, I know it's two Sherry's actually, but sister Sherry that I go to church with here, she told me she went into one of those consignment stores um, and she, she saw a sewing machine in here for 20 bucks. 20 bucks. It might not have um, 24 stitchings like some of the neural ones, but it had five stitchings. But to be honest, you don't even use all of those. You mostly use maybe the zigzag, the stretch, um, and of course the regular straight stitch. But sometimes the, you know, the decorative ones, which are like the more ones for embroidery, really don't need those. Um, so if you can find a basic sewing machine with just even one or two stitches, that's, that's perfect. That's more than enough. Um, so um, like I said, thrift stores, secondhand stores, eBay might prove a little bit more difficult because they technically have to ship it to you and they're pretty heavy. So you're going to have to pay half the, I would say half the, the price of the machine for them to ship it to you. So if you're going to find, if you find a, a nice one on eBay for like $50, chances are the shipping is going to be like $50, $60. So you're better off going somewhere where you can pick it up in person or somebody can meet you somewhere and you can pick it up. Like my old treadle machine that I just got, um, I got it from Binghamton and I'm like 40 minutes, 50 minutes from Binghamton. And I just had my friend pick it up because she was in Binghamton that day. The lady was like, oh yes, you can just come and get it. She sent me your address. I gave her the money and I have my machine. So um, I've seen also where they have people who are selling them online and they want to ship it to you. That thing is, I would say, <laughs> solid wood and cast iron. So the shipping would be a good nine, $800 that you're looking to ship it from wherever, depending on wherever it's coming from too. Um, 
And also friends and family. We all know somebody that used to sew or sewing or they might have two machines. Just ask your auntie, ask your cousin, ask your friend, ask your sister. Um, you know, they always, somebody always has a machine stored away somewhere that they're not using that you can borrow, you can buy from them, you can use for the time being until you get your own um, machine. Yeah, so continuing. So like guys for the next class. Um, so as I said, this was just a, you know, kind of a give you a, a general knowledge of, um, of what sewing is, is about and also to help you buy time to prepare for the next class. Cause I know a lot of you don't have a sewing machine as of yet. Um, so I'm trying to help you get time so that you can try and find a machine, try to acquire one. Um, for our next class, all you have to bring is yourself. I want you to bring a yard of fabric, scissors, needle, and thread. Um, and we might do an activity together um, where we could actually sew something together and I could show you how to do it and we could practice together. Um, but for our next class, I just want you to bring yard of fabric, scissors, needle, and thread. Um, and I'll teach you how to do a lot of the stitching because before we had machines, we had to, you know, they had to do a lot of the sewing by hand. Um, and we know that with the time we're heading towards, we might not always have electricity. And so it's good to know how to mend things with your hand, how to do the machine stitch with a needle and thread, um, and how to do simple, simple mending techniques. So, yeah, so um, this is the end of um, this first class. I'm not sure if anybody has any questions, comments um that they would like to questions they'd like to ask at this time